So here I am at the Steinway Gallery in Walnut Creek. It's a really gorgeous neighborhood with beautiful shops, uh, very upscale, very nice. And what a perfect location on Locust and Bonanza, I guess, in downtown Walnut Creek. And I'm here with Justin Levitt, and you're the manager, Justin, of this store. Is I that am. correct? Hi. Hi, Justin. Hi. And I know I had a couple of questions before I try your pianos. Uh, first, you told me that there's an evaluation uh, process going on, or it has been going on. Right. And can you tell me a little about that and what, what that comprises? Sure. So we've been always trying to make a better piano. We've made changes to the point where we want to reach out to the teaching community, because they're the ones who really give us the most feedback, the teachers and the artists, on how our pianos sound, how they feel. And so we reached out to a small but a good group of the solid teachers in the Bay Area to come in, play for about 15, 20 minutes on three different pianos, and then give us their feedback on how's the touch, how's the tone, what do you think of the case, is the sustain nice, and well, you'll see the survey. Right. Now, tell me a little bit about which pianos they tried. Did they try M's? Did they try O? Did they try the D? Or it was a brand new model M, um, a five foot ten Boston Grand, which is right there. Okay, so, so right over here, this is one of the the survey pianos, Boston. Okay. And then. It's and what's the size of this one? It's five foot ten and a half. Okay. <laughs> crescendo uh, capacity to really uh, develop a bigger sound to have a register like here. I like that voicing. That's very nice too. Happy for you to play. All right. It's a 48 and a half inch upright. Now it would be called a studio upright. It's a studio. Now, what about the other size pianos, the Steinway Grands? Well, we only assessed one Steinway, okay. one just... Boston, and one Essex. I see. What we have going down the line is this is our Model S, five foot one. Okay. This is a brand new Model O next to it, which is five, ten, and three quarters. Right. That's one of the pianos we brought back the design. That was a Hamburg only built piano for yes. about 80 years. Yes. We brought it back to build in our New York factory. And here's another newcomer, kind mm -hmm. of. This is the Model A. The A. Another piano we stopped building and brought back in 2006. And now this one is? A Model B. A model, the 7. This is our 6 foot 11. Okay, now we're moving over to what looks like a M, am I right? This should be familiar to you. This is our like 5 foot 7 Model yeah, M. It does look familiar. Um, it's brand new. Now what's this big one? 
actually also a Model B. Oh. But it's one of our new designs. We call this our Sterling Edition. I see. So all the hardware on the piano is nickel plated. Mm -hmm. And we've changed the color of the plate inside from brass to silver. Oh, I have to see that. Wow, I've never seen a silver colored plate. Yeah. Now, what is the advantage of the silver versus the brass? It's not an advantage as much as it is aesthetics. Okay. Um, our showroom in Beverly Hills mm -hmm. had some clients who specifically would ask from time to time for nickel hardware on the piano. And then one of them said, well, why don't we try it with a silver plate? And the combination looked beautiful. And so we started making them kind of limited edition. Now this is Whoa. something we took from the Homburg piano. I feel like I'm in outer space yeah. here in a Every, capsule. <laughs> everything is very clean. Everything is uh, sanded down so you can see the natural wood. You know, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that is quite different. And you, this is borrowed from the approach of the Hamburg factory? Well, I'd say borrowed, but... In some integrated. Words, yeah, it was integrated. Integrated in. You know, one of the things that we can show with your eyes. Right? Very interesting. It's yeah. Look, what is though. this over here? This little, it's a beam of some kind. <laughs> that goes through the soundboard to regulate the extra tension in the treble part of the piano. Wow. It's called I... our treble bell. Amazing. Now that I've never seen before. It's only on the model A, B, and D. So this is a brand new Steinway B that's here at the Steinway Gallery in Walnut Creek. Serial number 601348. And this is the one I was underneath this is for and saw that interesting beam that controls you as you mentioned. The tension. The tension, the tension and the treble. The treble. And I am very impressed with this piano. It's the, it's the 7 foot or the 611. Um, it is just a dream to play it. So I'm going to sample this piano. want to show some of the trills on this piano, how easy it is to trill, and also to play staccato. So I want to ask you a little bit about the transition of Steinway to its new ownership. Our new owner, Paul Paulson, owns three Steinways, loves the piano, and he's doing everything he can to help grow our company. In some markets that we haven't been, but he's been wonderful to work for. What are some of the changes that have been made in terms of, of you know, even the marketing or, you know, the general philosophy of, of distributing the pianos or making the exposure better or improving the quality of the piano from what? vantage point? Well, um, a lot of the the work we're doing is overseas right now, right, as far as getting us into new markets. Um, here, we're always increasing our, like, our, pro, our um, quality and at the factory, like, we've made a lot of changes since he's been on board and have been making for the last five years. 
You were asking me earlier about how back in the day you'd walk into a Steinway store and some would be okay, some would be good, but the dealer would normally say, well, you know, this will be great, we just need to work on it. Um, it used to take 10 to 12 hours to prepare a piano. That was expensive and time consuming. Now when we get a brand new piano uh, from our factory, we have to tune it, maybe check the regulation, maybe touch up a voicing here and there, but it takes us three hours. As so that's a to, huge difference. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly measurable. And, you know, we're just, we spend so much more time, attention to detail, the workmanship's gone up, the craftsmanship's gone up. It's really nice. Now, I've heard a lot about the, the Hamburg paradigm being applied now to the American Steinway. In what sense has the Hamburg uh, way of building pianos? I know they used to use the Renner hammers, the more bright sound, and the New York hammers were not as bright. Um, have they changed the American Steinway and brought more of the philosophy of Hamburg into the development of the American Steinway or the New York Steinway? It's an interesting question. So we're an American company, right? A German family opened up in New York in 1853. We didn't build the Hamburg factory until 1888. And some of the things we've been doing is just, like I said earlier, the, the attention to detail. It's hard to say that Steinway, before we started getting a little bit more refined, wasn't the best, right? It was. But now we're paying a little bit more attention to detail like you would expect from um, the German companies, right? There's Things are just done a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. And it's very noticeable and it's wonderful. Yeah, because the technicians were always saying, well, in the old days, if they got a set of Steinway hammers, they had to dope them a lot and use a lot of lacquer. And now they're somewhat pre-lacquered, but not over-lacquered. Is that right? That's right. And what is so terrible about lacquering uh, hammers? It seems like, you know, some techs, oh, you shouldn't lacquer any hammers. But the Steinway development of the hammer, you need to have the lacquer. Yeah, we need it. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a unique hammer, so if you mm -hmm. really are going for it, mm -hmm. you'll get that big, powerful brilliance you want. And then it's soft enough on the outside that if you want to play it very soft, it's warm and beautiful and lovely. How is Steinway developing its um, army of technicians, I mean, around the country? Are they training a lot of the technicians at the, at the Long Island factory to go out into the smaller communities and serve the Steinway pianos, the fine pianos, and keep them in, in very good maintenance? Is that yeah, an important we, part we of have it? A, very important. We have a Steinway training program specifically for technicians. One on dampers, one on voicing, one on tuning, one on regulating. Just anything that really is important for the technicians to know. We've got week to two long week classes that we teach the technicians. Yeah, I know Ron Connors was, has been my favorite technician yeah. going all the way back. I think Murray Pariah used Ron. And then he makes an appearance in Seymour's movie, Seymour and Introduction, yeah. where he's watching Seymour go from one. D to another and choose the one he wanted for the rotunda. Tell me about the that case we see right there. All right, so this is the rim of the okay. seven foot Model B, mm -hmm. and we make it out of hard rock maple. Right. And if you come closer, you can see the laminates of the of the maple, and we have these in a very specific room at our factory that's controlling the moisture content per square inch. Mm -hmm. And once we bring these boards out one at a time. We bring these out first, the outer rim. We glue it, put the next one down, glue it, so mm -hmm. on, all the way to the last inner rim. Mm -hmm. And then we have five or six people bring it around a big metal piano looking device in the middle of our floor, mm -hmm. clamp it into place. And this is how we get the, the structure, the foundation of our piano. But this is, this is very, very hard. It's one of the reasons why our pianos can last 100, yeah. 150 years. All the wood sits for a year before we even plane it to see if it's good. Right. After we bend the rim, it sits in a hallway, a, a different room, um, that controls, controls the humidity mm -hmm. for six to nine months. Mm -hmm. So it can forget that it's straight. I see. This is actually a seven foot piano and it's the real deal. Uh, yeah, this rim. is a Model B, seven footer. Wow, that's amazing. And there you've got the action up there, a sample action of a seven foot piano. Yeah, 57 parts have to move from when you push the note down to the hammer actually hitting the string. Wow. So where did I hear the number 8,000? Does 8,000 refer to the number of parts in a, in a that, piano? That sounds low to us. It's a little bit over 10,000 parts that move. Wow. There's about 12,000 116 total parts. Whoa. Don't quote me, I might be off one or two. Yeah, that's all right. Thanks, Justin.